right. Yo, man. Yo, what's happening? What's up, buddy? How's hey, it man, going? Bro. So let me let me first of all introduce you to John Lofthouse. John, this is uh, Guy. What's up, man? What up, man? How you doing, bro? Oh, I've had a crazy couple of days. That's why I kept canceling last minute. Because uh, we were we were supposed to film yesterday, uh, you know, have this show yesterday, but uh, obviously Guy had to pop one of his tires. My tire blew on my tractor when I was loading. I was doing a bunch of top. If you look on my story, I was doing a bunch of topsoil work and like reseeding. Yeah. And the tire from the, the there's, I have like a little tra trailer that I pulled behind my mower and the fucking wheel where it's welded, the, it, where it welded broke in half and I was, and it spilt dirt all over my lawn. So it was oh, like, it, that backed me up like two hours. And I, I totally forgot I even had a podcast because I was dealing with that mess. You, you, grow okay. your own, you grow on your own vegetables in there. Yeah. I see, I see it on your story. That's sick, man. Yeah. I've been getting mad into like growing, like growing vegetables and stuff like that. Man. It's awesome, man. I mean, it's like, it's a pain in the ass because it's time consuming, but like, it's pretty cool to like take it from your garden and like put it right on like the, the grill or like in a sack. It's cool, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it saves money too. Obviously, um, over here in England, it's really hard because the fucking weather's shit. Yeah, you guys don't have enough to really fucking vegetate yeah. anything off there. No. How's how's the situation over there now, guy? With uh, with the protesting and everything, is there anything happening around your side? Um, my my uh, my parents' town, my sister's town. Um, you know, there's a couple people in my family that are uh, that are teachers, so there were some death threats made. Um, <laughs> hey, my dogs bark at people when they walk by. Stop it. Um, and uh, I mean nothing around. I, I just, I don't, I think there's certain places that I don't, I think people just will not go. Um, okay. And I think like, I don't know. I, I just, I think that there's some, ta like in Texas, like I was talking to Branch, Branch is like, if anybody even steps foot, like in the vicinity of like any, at this neighborhood, he's like, it'll be mayhem. He's like, yeah, of course. It'll be a war, you know? Obviously. That's why when, every, when everybody was buying toilet paper and paper towels, I was buying ammo and stocking up on, on, on all my guns and shit. Yeah, because I was uh, I was listening to uh, to Fuad's uh, podcast, and uh, you were talking about the medicinal uh, um, uh, cannabis, and uh, you were saying about that you can't get it because you're, you've got license for for. for if you arms. try to get a medical marijuana card in the state of New Jersey, yeah, and you own guns, they have a right to take your ID card and all your weapons. How come? What's no the idea. reason? Oh. Doesn't make sense because ox like pain pills and all that shit's all legal and you can still own a gun with Oxycontin and Valium and Xanax and this and that, but um, people want to smoke weed legally, then they're not allowed to have a gun. I've never heard of somebody getting arrested for shooting a place up and hearing he was high off cannabis. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean. <laughs> I'm probably. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not condoning smoking weed. I'm just saying that that's the kind of like place that like the state in Jersey. Like this is kind of kind of fucking rules I got to abide by. Yeah, of course. Like we're not allowed to carry. I mean, I got you guys are very strict. Even you guys. I don't even think. When cops have guns like or no? <laughs> Say that again. Do cops have guns in UK? No, right? Not not yet. Uh, <laughs> but it looks like it's going that way. They got batons. Yeah. yeah. See, like cops. See, like cops here all have guns. Um, and a lot of states that like civilians can can carry this my state you're not allowed you get caught with a gun you're in big trouble but I can, I can have a gun on house. me I, I can have a gun on me if I if I go from my house to the gun range and the gun range to my house but if I even stop for gas and a cop wants to check my vehicle and I have a gun in my car even if I'm stopped for, I can get arrested you are not allowed to stop anywhere point a point b that is it and then point b to back to point a there's no Damn. stop in between well, what I miss living in the Middle East now. America, anyway, <laughs> Americans, you love guns, yeah. Yeah. Love I got a fucking 500-pound gun safe, bro, in my basement. <laughs> what, uh, what gun do you have? I got a 870. I got a uh, 38 Special. I have a four, Glock 40. I got a Glock 9. I got a subcompact Glock. I got an Alaskan 45. Um, right. I have an 870 shotgun. I have an AR. I have a Dark Storm V1 with a collapsible stock. I like your style, buddy. I like your style. <laughs> you, you know, I lived in I lived in the Middle East where we used a lot of uh, Russian, you know, uh, 
guns and, and machine guns and stuff like uh, AK-47s and yeah. uh, Star and stuff like that. But uh, yeah. uh, oh, never I got a chance to. I have to... a Chig too, another handgun. Nice, nice. Um, just for me to get everyone to know that um, uh, you're probably our first actual star, you know, so we're, we're kind of nervous here. <laughs> I don't know why I'm a star. We've talked how many times? <laughs> I know, I know, but it's uh, it's not that. It's just uh, I just tell people I I treat it just like it's a fucking phone conversation. That's how I, I know. I know. I think just, is I, you, you should have seen our first one. I was like, um, um, you know, I was all sweating, and uh, it's 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 getting better as we go. I through. have when I do mine, I never prepare prepare anything because it's I just go right off the top of my head. Yeah, off the cuff. Because huh? if, if I if I take notes and like read stuff, then I actually get more fucking flustered. Yeah, if yeah. I just go off the top of my head, but that's uh, some people can't do that. The thing is, we because we we started this uh, podcast, we have a lot of people sending us questions for you. So it's like, okay, where where am I going to fit those? And obviously, a lot of the questions get answered while we're talking. Yeah, so it kind of works out well. Exactly, um, just throw them in. Yeah, I had a lot of questions sent to me the other day. Yeah, man, I have loads of them here, but I think it's all going to get. Um, you know, answer it anyway. So uh, guy, what's, what's the situation with your health now? Are you, are you better? Yeah, I was never really like not good. I just, uh, when I had, I, I had COVID back in March and April uh -huh. and, um, I tested positive for it. <clears throat> so I know I had it and, um, it, it knocked me on my ass. The hardest part was the breathing. I was breathing some very, very heavy. Yeah. Um, when, when I, when people ask like, well, what did it feel like? I'm like, lay on the ground and put a 45 pound plus uh, chest, uh, 45 pound plate on your chest. I'm like, and breathe. That's what it felt like. Yeah. And I had a cough. I lost my smell. I lost my taste. I still like, this is Cutler's blackberry lemonade. Like I can taste it, but it, I have to like actually focus on what it is or I can't like, cause this is not all working right. Mm -hmm. um, my lungs are not back to hundred percent. And then I got a blood clot from the fucking virus. So then I was in the hospital uh, last Tuesday and uh, this week I can start training legs again, but I got to be on a, uh, uh, anticoagulant in like a blood thinner for three months to ensure that the clot goes away. I've yeah, been of to course. five doctors in the past week. It's, it's annoying. Oh, shit. See, coming, coming out of this subject here, just a little bit, you know, when you guys train, do you have the same thing over here? Cause we ha we can't tell people where we're training because otherwise people will tell, you know, nobody they, knows I train. Oh, nobody knows. Oh, so it's the same shit as here. I probably could because I know every cop in like the three towns surrounding me, so I can pr I can get away with pretty much fucking anything because no cops yeah, can like, harass me. Absolutely. Um, but when it starts getting into like you know I don't need like certain um, tasks for showing up to try to shut down the gym that I'm at. It's me and one other buddy. We open the we open the gym. We don't yeah. turn on the lights. We don't turn on the music. I have this little fucking speaker thing that's Bluetooth that we play. There's yeah. no lights on, and we just fucking – it's like – That's cool, though. It, it's like training like the zombie it, – it, it's cool. But the one thing that I noticed is that when you – if you shut the lights off and it's – you ever go out to dinner with, like, a chick, and, it like, the lights are very dim, and, yeah. uh, like, you almost get, like, tired? <laughs> right? Yeah. It's, like, very hard to keep going when yeah. the light is so dim. Like, the workouts were taking so long – because like in in between like a set like you want to fall asleep, yeah, yeah. Because there's like the only light you get is from outside. Yeah, all right. There's no light on. Wow. So I mean, wow. we get it done. I mean, fuck, I've had a phenomenal <laughs> fucking park. It's just even even with having COVID, I trained through the whole. I hit some of my crazy. That's why I, I didn't think I had it because my buddy who I was training was like, "There's no way you can be that strong and be sick." And I was like. You trained the whole and way through. Tested and I was and I was positive. He's like, "There's no way you're sick." And I was like, "Yeah." Then he got tested because he was he started being like, "Oh, I think I have it too now." I think I have it too. <laughs> he got tested. I was with him every day, every <laughs> single day besides one day a week when we didn't train, and he didn't yeah. get sick. He, he didn't get sick. Never got it. Nope. Wow. Wow. I mean, the guy, the guy who gave it to me, he was like 17 years old in Morocco, and he, I think he, he had a fever for like like four hours like really like nothing like the next yeah. day he was up and running and shit i was like and i was like flat on my ass like really hospitals and all sorts of shit you got fucked but, up um, huh? i really got fucked man my face uh you know, i got a palsy on one side yeah but not anymore yeah now it's okay i, I can still 
okay. Like it's, it still doesn't blink a hundred percent, but I still need to patch it when I'm sleeping. Cause otherwise it stays open and uh, gets dry wow, and shit. Crazy. So, I remember you sending me the pictures, man. It was fucking crazy. But, um, um, and then I got out of the hospital over. and my sponsor dropped me. That was good. That was a nice little welcoming gift. Oh, oh you got you. Oh shit. You got dropped. Who was, who was you with? I, I, who was I with? Yeah. Yeah. Um, M fit. M fit. M fit. Why they drop? I'm afraid of him, but um... for being in the hospital. <laughs> no, that's not why they dropped me. But I got the day I got out of the hospital, they're like, "Yeah, we're not resigning you." I said, hmm, "Okay." <laughs> oh, fantastic! The thing is, I I got signed with uh, HD Muscle uh, right at the end of me. Like I was getting better, and I got a I got a text from the a guy. Dorian Hamilton's company, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's funny because I wanted I wanted him to 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 prep me for for the next show and he's, he's maxed out. He's maxed out, you know. Um, really? So I'm I'm going in alone this time and see what happens. Uh, Long dog. You know, it's uh, we we don't even do you know anything, guy, about about the shows? Are they are they like they they set up dates? But the only thing I know is I'm qualified. The only thing I know is I'm qualified for the Olympia, and the only thing I know that that's happening. That's it. Uh, and uh, how, how do you? Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. You say you don't think the Olympia is happening? No, no, the Olympia is the only one that I know so far for sure uh, that they're saying is go ahead. Yeah, yeah. You know? Which is great for me. It gives me a longer off season to be a fucking fat fuck. So I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, John, you, you need to qualify, right? Yeah, well, I was going for Korea, but then I found out. I was going for Korea, and then somebody messaged me off seeing my YouTube video. He was like, oh, man, you're going for Korea, but don't you know that you got quarantined for 14 days? I was like, what? And they sent me this uh, link on the government. Uh, like the UK. Yeah, if you travel out of the country, they fucking throw you in a, in a, uh, in a, in a hotel days, for fucking 14, two weeks. Yeah, 14 days in a government facility. So I was like, that's, that's not happening. So then when you said about Alicante. Yeah, Spain. Sent, yeah, we'll go for that. So yeah. I'll do the amateur the day to get to us. Huh? I'll do the amateur the day before, and uh, you do the the, the yeah the, the pro realize, show. I didn't realize it was a pro show. I thought it was just an amateur show. Right, right. Why is it so, all stopped prepping four weeks ago? What show are you getting ready for? Uh, Al me. Yeah, Alicante. Which one's that? Uh, Spain. Yeah. Spain. October eleventh. October eleventh. Yeah. 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 Oh, so you got plenty of time. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So I was got, I was eleven weeks out for a career, but now I'm eighteen weeks out. So yeah, you got plenty of time. Shit, we're just kicking back now. We just dropped all the cardio, put some food back in. Just chill you out. don't need to. Yeah. So, so guy, I mean, now we're talking about the Olympia and everything. How, how, how do you see the two twelve now? You know, uh, you know, Flex not being there. Uh, obviously, he moved on. It's been the second year not being there. But then Kamal uh, and and Derek. You know, it was it was quite close to the first day, and then the next day, Kamal came in with super conditioning. Um, what, uh, how do you feel was, about this? I didn't think it was close. I think well, I think Derek, um, and I'll say, it, and and everybody thinks I pick on Derek. I, I don't. I just I don't pick on him. I just think the kid just hasn't figured it out yet. And uh, I I think part of it's from you know being young and dumb, and mm -hmm. uh, you know having that that mentality that. Uh, you, you know, they think they know everything because there's been a lot of people that have tried to help him, uh, myself included in Flex. And mm -hmm. you don't have to take somebody's opinion. That's fine. If I give you an opinion, I'll take it. It's not a problem. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, he, uh, I, I spoke with him la after his first Olympia and I told him he looked awful. I go, bro, you looked aw I go, you walked out watery. I was like, you didn't have a striation. I go, you, I go, you looked s s small and stringy. I'm like, yeah, your back double biceps impressive because it's big. I'm like, but the physique that you were posting is not the physique that was on stage. I, it just wasn't. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then uh, he 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 actually agreed in some ways, and then uh, he looked, I thought, substantially worse this year. I don't even think I I could have easily had him out of the top five, and he's somebody that I would have said is probably going to win the show. And I'll say that again this year. If, if De 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 listen, the only person that was very unbeatable. And the only person that I really saw that actually beat him head on uh, was, was Jose beat Flex Lewis at New York Pro one year. But there, that was like, I very rarely seen Flex get taken down and never taken down at the Olympia. Mm -hmm. um, now that Flex isn't there, all of these guys are beatable. Flex was, Flex was like a fill. Like he's unbeatable unless he's like off. 
because Flex was just that good. Yeah. These guys in the 212 now, none of them are that good. I'm not that good. Derek's not that good. Um, nobody's that good. Like, that guy's not bet, is not to the point where he can't beat me, and I'm not to the point where I can't beat him. It's just who, which, which one of us is going to show up that day because back in the earlier days of 212, you had your guys, and they could either be on or off, or you, know, you yeah. kind of knew the, the pecking order. But now – you have like a couple of the old guys left and you got this whole new group of fucking young bucks coming in. And now we're starting to mix it up. And you could tell there's, t- there's tension between some of the younger guys and the older guys, because we, I, and then flex said it, I said it, David said it. A lot of them don't respect what we built in that class. Of course. And a lot of them are fucking walk around just because they're a, a pro and they compete in the two twelve like that they're owed something like you gotta, just because you're a pro, you didn't earn your fucking stripes yet. Like that doesn't mean shit. You got to earn your fucking stripes. You want to earn your stripes, fucking start winning shows, like doing everything that you need to, to promote the sport. These guys turn pro and they think they're owed something because they fucking have an IPB pro card. I think social media takes their status in their own head further Mm -hmm. than they actually are on paper. Mm -hmm. Their status on social media precedes their actual track record winning shows. Yep. Yeah. So, so John, John, what do you, what do you think of, of the two twelve? let's say, you know, last year to this year. I mean, the thing is, let's be honest here. Kamal is not young, all right? Let's, let, let's put it out of there. He's 48, right? 47. Yeah, I mean, come on. He's, he can't be – I mean, he, there's no other Dexter, okay? And even Dexter in his last show, he wasn't the Dexter that I admired all the time. Uh, but Yeah, but it's still a Dexter that was the second best out of all those guys. At absolutely. absolutely. I mean, come on. Dexter is Dexter. I mean, he's like, the guy's a fucking vampire. But yeah. – <laughs> I mean, Kamal, could he pull it off again? What do you think? I think he could pull it off again this year. But I think he could hold Derek off. Like you said, huh? no one's seen Derek in shape yet, has he? No. So, I mean, I don't even follow it, mate. I'm, I'm going to be straight up here. I don't even follow it enough to really know. All I, I'd, I'm interested to see what uh, Keon will look like in a couple of years. Keon will be a freak. Yeah, because yeah. I think he's fucking, I think he's got a great physique, man. Uh, George, George is going into the two twelve, but George has got a weird physique. George is very lengthy. Off. He's, he's got, got that very, turn up. He's got turn he's got up. Very long legs and very long arms, and it throws yeah. his whole physique off. Yeah, makes crazy back, string, crazy so structure, it. crazy muscle, crazy conditioning, crazy yeah. everything. But just yeah. don't look that good. He look. He's too light. <clears throat> yeah, don't look right. I I personally think that the two twelve doesn't get much exposure as much as the open and even classic. Yeah. To be honest with you, it doesn't. No. And and it's 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 a fucking shame because we have some really really good guys there. You know, it's. Uh, mm. um, I mean, I'm I'm for me, Jose, was one of my, um, you know, I, I the guy I admire the guy, Did on and off the stage. Him ever? Say that Jose? again. You said Jose. Yeah. Did you ever work with him? No, no. Love him. I know he does coaching too. Uh, he's uh, he's one of the guys that, the, it's he's classy. Yeah, off on and off the stage, you know. Well, this is the kind of, fun. this is the kind of guy that I want. If I had children, you know, my children to look up to this guy. You know, yeah. this is the kind of bodybuilder I want them to look at. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I might ask a question about. He's like, if you had kids, would you want your kids to do what you do? I was like, nope. No, no. <laughs> uh, I don't want my kids to get into bodybuilding. It's uh. You know, Not I'm, because I'm a, I don't I don't love it and I don't enjoy it. And I didn't make a great living from it, but I know the fucking toll that it took on my body and my yeah. body. I, because I, I it's I just train harder than the next guy, and it, it, my body fucking is worn down. Is it is it true that you're 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 looking to retire anytime soon? I mean, this is a rumor. Uh, it's a couple, couple years. I'm I'm not not right now, but in the next couple <laughs> years, I give myself like probably three years max. I'm old, bro. I'm 38, man. Like I've been doing, I've been competing as a bodybuilder since I was. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm fucking 40. I, 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 what do you want me to say? I, 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 I don't. You want me to say I'm sorry? I don't. Like, I don't want to be, dude. I, I, if my body felt better, this is the problem, is that I got to where I got to not because of genetics, because I worked my fucking dick off. Because my genetics suck. So I killed myself in the gym every day to just like, I deadlifted every back workout, heavy squatted every leg day, like heavy 
barbell bench press every fucking chest day. Heavy, it, like it was just, I never ever went, took it easy on myself. And yeah. I'm glad because it got me to where I got to, but it, I'm, I'm in pain 24 hours a day. Yeah, I, I can believe 24 that. 24 hours yeah. a day I'm in pain. Yeah. Uh, John, you wouldn't know what that means because you're still a kid. <laughs> John, how old are you? My, uh, 27. Just fun, Christ. 27. And and he's turned pro pretty, last year, you know. So. My knee's pretty fucking beat up. I've had I've had torn meniscus, and I have a torn meniscus in my left knee that is that I had uh, surgery on. I've had two shoulder, shoulder shoulder surgeries on this. I had one shoulder surgery on this. I yeah, probably yeah. got to get back surgery once I'm done competing because I have two bulges, <laughs> two herniations, and fractures in my spine. My knee's gonna have to get done again, and I'm gonna need two double shoulder replacements by the time I'm about sixty. And then Ronnie Ronnie ain't got shit on you. Yeah, <laughs> Ronnie's the thing. I just that's horrible. Uh, that's just awful. I know. It's shit. You know, I, I I don't know. I don't know if we if, if it's unlucky or if it's the way. I I, I, I don't know what to say. You know, because I know people who probably. I mean, I don't think anyone could train like Ronnie. But you look at Branch no. today. I think he's the most intense motherfucker I've ever seen. All right, and uh, Branch. Yeah. Branch, and somebody said who's – I, I answered this. Somebody said who's – actually, no, my training partner that I've been training with in the gym asked me. He goes, who's the, he goes, who's the strongest guy you've ever trained with? And I go, D well, there's the difference. I said, are you talking strong or intense? I go, because to me, they're not the yeah, same that's thing. All, that's all. Be, you know, like Nick Walker is very strong, but he's not, like, intense. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, Luke. Uh, Luke was the strongest guy that I said I ever competed with or um, uh, worked out with because Luke could literally – grab like the most ridiculous amount of weight and he wouldn't even breathe heavy doing it. Uh, even even like uh yeah, I used to train stronger with... than johnny jackson you think uh, i've trained with johnny i dude luke was a fucking freak mm. the guy was doing bent over barbell rolls with five plates i haven't seen many guys do that yeah. like that's holy shit it's insane crazy. like um that's but, my, my, it, my maximum squat yeah uh, <laughs> but intense factor branch <clears throat> yeah that's that's what i mean i mean the guy he trained heavy and intense the intensity was through the roof and he's still he's he's still a good businessman he's running around and stuff he but i'm not sure like that oh see what i mean oh, it's like, like i think oh, ronnie's I, just un, unlucky yeah ronnie had that bad issue with his uh with his back when he was young, once, he once all that hardware broke it just it was a nightmare for him i feel right. he's uh he's had a rough one man he's <clears throat> He's had a rough one, that guy. So, so, Guy, do you think we've seen the best version of you to date, or? <sighs> Depends. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. Because I know when they, when they cut my bicep tendons, like my shoulder surgery had to do with my bicep tendon initially, essentially. Um, so my bicep shape doesn't look the same as it used to, um, mm. especially in my left arm. The peak is way smaller. Um, so have you seen the best ver this is the this this is the first time I've had an off season leading up to the Olympia and not having to diet down prior to to qualify. Like I've never taken uh I did my best at the oh it's sixth, best I've ever taken. And uh I've never had a full off season where I didn't have to start a prep to do a show to qualify for the Olympia to get to the Olympia. So this is the first time I'm going all into the Olympia and that being my first show of the year. So I would say this should be the best version anybody's ever seen of me because this is the first time I'm going into the O oh, first time, you know, and I saw what Sean did and, you know, Sean's one of the smaller guys um, on the stage. And I saw how easily he knocked off a lot of those guys. Of course. So, yeah. you know, um, I'm hoping that it, it kind of, falls in place that year because I would like to go to the O, do well, and then next year do the O and do the rock show and not have to constantly um, qualify. Because when, you know, John will he'll know this when he gets old, the older you get, you, you want to compete a lot when you're younger as a pro, but yeah. when you get older, you like it, you don't want to do five, six, seven shows a year. It gets tiring. Yeah. 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 yeah no. <clears throat> I mean, in all honesty, uh, I got, I got asked, asked this question about three days ago um, by the muscular development guys. Uh, AJ, you know, AJ, the guy, the, the, the co-host for uh, muscular development. And uh, he's like, so if, if you go to Spain and you get your pro card, what are you going to do with it? It's like, dude, I'm 40. 
You know, what am I going to do with my pro card yeah. today? Other than it's just a status for me to build something on that platform from that, you know, from there onwards. Otherwise, yeah, but I don't think, I, I, I don't think you need that platform to build something you want to build either. <clears throat> Believe me, guy, when, when you have this IFBB pro in front of your name, a lot of guys would bow. I because I've heard a lot of times. I, I, I don't think I don't think it's like that now. I don't know. I, ain't shit I think back in the. Bro. I think back in like, you know, early two thousands, like even up to two thousand and ten. I would agree. Now, IFBB Pro is in front of everybody's name. Dude, there's, there's so many pros now. Back I when I competed, the amount of pros were like, there was like few and far between that. That like, I I would even see now. You you can't go to a gym without being with a bunch of pros. So ain't nobody bowing to just because you said, it says IFBB in front of your name. I, I can tell you that. No, no, of course, 100%. Um, I, just, I just feel like... It might be uh, different over here a little bit, Fazil, because there's not as many pros over here. Why, yeah. it's like that over there? I mean, I've been to Britain before. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'm I mean, I, I've been down at Rips, weren't you? Yeah, I'm trying to... Uh, yeah, Rip in, in, in Basildon? Yeah, yeah. Basildon, yeah. That's where yeah. I live. That's where I live. I don't know. Look, that gym's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yep, just cool, man. I'm at Stackhouse now. Stackhouse is better. I'm implied to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, John, you you got prepped by Luke, right? You, we I think we mentioned that before. Yeah Luke, yeah, Luke was the guy who prepped me for my first and second show, man. He was a guy. He was a well, not the guy that got me into bodybuilding because I was always into bodybuilding, but he was the first bodybuilder I ever saw. You know, I always said this. He was the first like real, you know, dude walking around at like 280 pounds I ever saw. Up till then, it was just like watching Jay Cutler and stuff on YouTube. So I never really got into bodybuilding. And when I met Luke, you know, he said yeah. he said that you could do. It. I never got into bodybuilding because I didn't want to be three hundred pounds. You know, I I love what they looked like back in the seventies and eighties. Yeah, classic. Yeah, and then Luke told me about the classic division. So that's when I that's when I went for it. You know, I've never had any intention of wanting to be that big. So yeah, then when right. Luke told me about the classic division, yeah, got into it that way, man. And then he prepped me again, obviously, for my – well, he prepped me for the final six weeks of my pro card. Yeah. Uh, okay. Last do, year. You, you, do, you do realize that he, call, he he didn't call you personally out, but he called you out on Flood's uh, podcast. Yeah, I know. I know. I've seen it. I don't, I don't really get what it was about. There was a, I'm not going to speak bad of Luke, love, man. I was I cool with Luke. Luke but... be here for just another hour. <laughs> he, I don't know why he said what he said because it was all – I know, you know, uh, a guy. If you don't know this, uh, he, uh, I have no clue what you're talking about. Uh, well, Luke, I am. Luke, I will say this: I am probably one of the most detached bodybuilders you'll ever meet. Like I, I, <laughs> I'm not like I am very engaging with my fans. But you know, if you go, have you seen my just just for the record? If you guys hear snoring, oh, oh, I see. <laughs> He's a beast. She's pa- she is passed out snoring. He's he watches everything. And she's out like a light. <laughs> Do they take shifts? <laughs> <laughs> they know. I'm like, you watch, make sure nobody comes up that fucking driveway. <laughs> so, yeah, well, I was saying, uh, guy. So, so, yeah, no, so- I didn't. So, oh, so I'm a, ta- like, I don't, people are like, oh, did you see this RX muscle interview? Like, oh, I saw the thing. You, I'm like, I don't, I watch nothing. I'm not. As far as draw, like, podcasts and stuff, but like, interviews, I don't pay attention. Oh, did you hear about the drama between this guy and this girl or, this girl or this guy and this guy. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But I, what mean, I mean, I, I've seen, you, like I've seen you address big problems. Basil, you told me about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. But basically, what happened was Luke said, uh, the, uh, the question was from, from Fuad asking Luke uh, about how to change coaches. You know, how do you advise people to change coaches? And Luke was like, um, you know, it's the best way is actually just, you know, speak to, to the previous coach and, and thank him for everything and move on, you know, uh, make it as, as professional as possible. But then he mentioned a guy that he helped turn pro, but never actually thanked him for it yet. And in, in two weeks time, he posted a picture with a new coach and that was not true. So how, so how do you know it was about John? Oh, it's definitely not me. <laughs> because me. So he, he described his whole relationship with me. So he said that I uh, I worked with him a few years ago, which I did. We done well. I won my first. Uh, I won my first show and got third in the British in my first year of training. And then he said I left him, which I never. He just stopped replying to me. 
So I had to go to another coach. So I went to another coach and then I won the British in which Luke said that when I went to another coach, I'd done really bad. So I came back to him. I didn't, I won the British. And then I basically went to Luke for sort of the last six weeks of my prep for a little bit of help because I prepped myself all the way through uh, to the, to this show. And I was like, oh, I don't feel comfortable sort of bringing myself in for my pro card. You know, there was too many decisions to make and I couldn't, I could, I didn't want to be in, in charge of it. So, uh, so I asked him for his help and then we won, I won the pro card. And the first guy that I messaged was Luke. I literally got off stage. Sam was with me, you know, Fazano Sami. I got off stage. I messaged a picture of my pro card and I said, dude, I've done it. Got the pro card, sent him a thank you message and then cracked on with my day. But Luke on, on, uh, on Bodybuilding and Bollocks said that I never thanked him and said that he found out that I won my pro card on Instagram. I was like, what? I was like, he's the first person I messaged. He probably just didn't fucking remember. Or, uh, yeah, he, he probably didn't remember. He was prepping for the for the interview at the time. So I've been like, I I understand. He was going through probably the most pressure he's probably ever been through. You know? Yeah. Because he course. said I left him and went to another coach, and I was like, dude, I messaged you five times. Got, if, five. Listen, if you if you know that's true, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even think of it as like a negative. You know, just because. Uh, like, I was just okay. didn't, didn't really get where it was coming from. I was like, I was like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> But it's not how it happened. But it is what it is. Yeah, he yeah. was a good guy. I really liked Luke, man. I was really fucking upset. I was. We I was, were all upset. Mate, oh, mate, I was upset. I fucking cried, man. He taught me. Uh, I was doing my like, fucking video. The guy was like, "Can you say something?" I go, "Without crying, I go probably not." <laughs> yeah. uh, every every person here in the UK uh, guy, like, do do you know when they said if you're any every bodybuilder. In, in the pro ranks at some point had to go through Jay for some advice. I Over here in the, yeah. I mean, here in the UK, he's our Jay Cutler, you know? So if I needed anything and I'm not sure he'd be the first form of contact. Yeah. And, and, and Luke was that guy, you know, and, and um, it was very, very hard for us uh, for him to leave us so soon. Um, and um, it, it, it affected all of us, man. Like, it wasn't it wasn't easy and at that point everyone started relating to uh to uh, the mental uh health issue well we it's it, um, listen this, this if you're if you compete you, you're mentally not stable that's that's we're, that's just period that's the reason why we compete the reason why people compete and do this is to stabilize themselves because i think people that do this are very unstable and need this much stru structure in their life to fucking stay like this um we all have fucking de demons, man. Uh, we all do, you know? And, uh, you know, we've all done good. We've all done bad. And, you know, uh, this sport can bring out the worst in people. It can bring out the best in people. But um, I, there, there's dark times, man. It just it comes with the territory. And people go, oh, it's not that hard. All you do is eat and train. You, know, you eat six times a day and sleep and train. And that's all you do. And the problem is that, first of all, if you gave somebody the same shit to eat every day, for fucking 16 weeks, I don't care who they are, they would be a miserable motherfucker. And when you have to do cardio every single day, when you have to train every single day, when you can't take a day off, when you're tired, it's just like, it, it's, it's, and then it's the, with me, it's, I, I, I seclude myself. Like I, don't, I'm not around a lot of people. Like if I'm around somebody, it's like me and my girlfriend or like me and my buddy will stop, like my buddy will stop by, but like, for the most part, dude, I live in a four bedroom house with just me and my dogs. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Like girlfriend comes over and stays and this and that, but like, in the grand scheme of life, like I'm here alone. And I think, I think the, the hard part of bodybuilding is kind of the being alone part, because even when we find relationships, we sabotage them because we are bodybuilders Absolutely. And, and everything's more important. Nothing is more important than bodybuilding with us. We will fucking break up with a girl before we skip a gym we'll fucking break up with a girl before we skip a meal or do this because that's how we programmed our fucking our minds i broke up my not, missus twice during my last prep twice we do it to ourselves though yeah you know 100 percent. the thing is guy i mean <clears throat> excuse me um imagine that imagine that you're prepping and you said like we're we all have our demons and we're, we're we compete to 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 keep us stable but i know that you're i wouldn't call it unlucky but you had a lot of knocks and one of them is your skin condition 
I mean, how, how does that, how, how do you get over this shit? You know, like I, I, I break. I mean, I look at, I mean, like perfect example, like when you mess with me, I was like, you're not, you're not dead. Right. <laughs> I mean, think about it. You know, you're not dead. Right. It sucked. It was horrible. Like you had a fucking rough run. Like you went through a lot of shit in the hospital. It sucked. Yeah. But it's like, okay, you're, you're not dead. So do we sit and sulk in the fact that we have bad luck or do we do something to turn it around to have a fucking pretty badass story to tell at the end of the day? I decided to have a, better, a, a, a positive story to tell than a story where I'm like, you know what? This happened. I give up. It's too tiring. I don't want to go through it again. And then I had to get double shoulder surgery. And I was like, yeah, I'll make another good story. <laughs> uh, I, do, 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 I got COVID in a blood clot. That's another good chapter. It's just like, keep them coming. I keep... They they say God gives its toughest challenges to his strongest soldiers. So break, I keep keep pouring them down. I'll keep taking them. I I feel like you're, I wouldn't call it under pressure, but I feel like you're responsible for a lot of crowd looking at you and thinking, okay, if guy, okay, guy's got COVID now. If he's gonna stand up and make it, then we can all make it. It's well, like I just that's what I want. If I leave something behind, I don't want to call it a legacy because I think you have to be a champion to have a legacy. Um, but I would want like for people to remember me by is like just that, like there is nothing that bad that you cannot overcome. And I'm not saying that getting overcoming sh shoulder surgery and doing a bodybuilding show is overcoming or beating cancer. And I'm not, I'm not comparing it to things, but anybody that competes know what it's like to go through certain dramatic things and then come back from them because it's just very hard to do. Of course. Very hard to do, especially when we're judged on a sport with how we look. So when something happens to our physical appearance and we have to come back from that, it's not easy. Mm. It was not easy for me to come back from my shoulders. Not easy, bro, at all. There were I, days I was like, fuck, I, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to fucking compete again. Like, father time is just not, not on my side, man. Wow. Wow. John, what about, I mean, your knees, did you, did you get surgery done on them or, or uh, I had a car since 2011, 2013. Cause uh, when, when the car crashed, the dashboard smashed on, on my legs and I uh, partial tear in my left meniscus. I had surgery on it in 2013. Um, but I still squat five, 600 pounds. It hurts. I've seen you squat. People <laughs> <laughs> were like, why do you do it? I'm like, because I can. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's really the reason I don't do it to show up. I don't do it. Like, if there's a weight that I'm like, fuck, this is stupid. But, like, I don't help myself. Like, I don't – like, I was outside shoveling a yard and a half worth of fucking – people are like, a yard and a half, that's doesn't seem – a yard and a half is a fucking mound up to here. Fucking God knows how long I was shoveling into wheelbarrows and fucking – read that. Like, and then I, I, I literally get done. I walk inside. And I'm like, my fucking lower back is killing me. And I got my back brace on and this and that. And then I wake up the next day and – that's you know, right. today's back day, and I'll be in the <laughs> fucking gym, rack pulling fucking six yeah. plates. Yet I'm like, I shovel, and I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> you know? Uh, how, how do you have I don't, sex I, then? I don't have the answer. I just, if, if, if you've got a heartbeat, you, you got a chance. I hey, mean, guy, guy, how do you have sex then if, if your back is that bad? I lay down. Lay down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you've never done that i you know what we you know you've never like just said that. listen my back or my leg like if you want this to, to happen you're like yeah. you gotta you gotta jump on because yeah yeah. You know. yeah i can it's uh it's happened a few times especially like, worse uh, has been like during sex where i've had it's it's hamstring or ab cramps which are oh man awful <laughs> awful um, like, you try to keep going and you're like <laughs> you're trying to like stretch it out at the same time yeah, you're trying to like pretend like you're giving her a different move and angle and you're like <laughs> and have you realized guys it always happens when she's close and you're like shit I don't want to change the rhythm now <laughs> yeah. I don't want to change the tempo <laughs> I'm ruthless I'll just stop and be like get off <laughs> Oh, cramps man. to me are like I, I've had cramps right. I've seen fucking Jesus Christ. Like I was like, this is the end. Uh mate, I had I had cramps so bad once. I was nigh on crying. I was in the I was I trained legs and then came straight home. I was so fucked that I fell asleep for like two or three hours. A cramp woke me up in my hamstring. 
you try and stretch your leg out, right? To stretch it out, and then my quad on I the cramp. same leg I mean, got cramp. I've never experienced cramp in your quad and your hamstring on the same leg, and it happened in the other leg. And I was like crawling. I didn't know what to do. I was in, I was in my flat, literally crying. I was like <laughs> screaming in pain. I didn't know what to do. So all I, I was like crawling to the bathtub. I got up into the bathtub, mm -hmm. just turned the cold shower on, and just laid in the bathtub. <laughs> 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 both legs cramped up on both sides. I was like, dude. Worst, I had something when I got married in 2011. We went on our, on our honeymoon and went to Mexico. And I, I didn't train. I drank every day. Yeah. Drank all day long, every day. Ate shit all day long, every day for like, I don't know, 10 days. <laughs> Came back home uh, on Saturday before Easter. It was Easter Sunday. And then Monday was back. Back then I trained quads on Monday. And hamstrings together. So I was like, I'm going to take it easy. Take it easy. I ended up going up to five plates on a squat. Meanwhile, I didn't, I didn't even train for 10 days. And I tried a crazy leg workout. So I'm at home, sitting on our fucking couch, watching TV, and just ate a meal. And I'm just feet up, relaxed, and watching TV. All of a sudden, my fucking hamstring goes, and I was like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh. And then all of a sudden, my fucking right quad locks. And I'm like, yeah. and then I'm like, it's like, Party, party wants to bend your leg and party wants yeah. to straighten out. So yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah. you're trying to oh, find a middle ground. Man. And then my fucking other leg goes. Yeah. And I'm fucking, oh. I'm screaming at my, at the time, wife. <laughs> I'm like, she's like, what do you want me to do? I go, pick me the fuck up. She's yeah. like, <laughs> I was like, because I wanted, I wanted her to put me on the ground. So she pulled me off the yeah. couch onto the ground. At the time I was working factory, called factory. He didn't pick up. I was like, call Palumbo. I said, give me the phone, call Palumbo. So he called Palumbo. She goes, Dave, like, we just got back from our honeymoon, like, guy trained legs. Like, he's on the floor screaming, like, his leg, both quads and both hamstrings are cramped. So <laughs> That's exactly what He brings me over a glass of water, and she just dumped salt in it. He goes, Dave said to drink this. And I was like, oh. yeah. So I pounded this fucking salt water, and within five minutes, it went away. And I was, my, I was so in shock. Because of how it was like 15 minutes of yeah. un cramp that did, and when it went away, I literally sat downstairs and I was like this. <laughs> yeah, you're fucking that's sweating sweat and all that. The cold sweat. Oh. That's what yeah. I had, man. And, and, and I every time you want to move, and every no. time you want to move, you're thinking like, shit, it's gonna cramp again. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh man, that's the worst. I had some bad. I've had some bad ones. So, uh, did, guy, did you? Did you? Did you ever get a, a weeder contract? Yep. I was with uh, Weeder and AMI 2013. Because I was with they don't I was exist with, now. I was with MD. I was with then I, I was with MD, then went to AMI, which is Weeder Flex, and then I went back to MD, and then now the magazines are like non existent. Yeah. They stop printing them, yeah. Yeah, but they don't do like uh, they they had like athlete columns back in the day and shit. They don't really have that now. That's what we got paid for to write columns. Like back when I came up, the whole sport was completely fucking different. And um, do you, do you find that athletes right now struggle a lot financially because there's no weeder contract? I think people struggle because they're lazy and they want to make a living off of something that is very hard to make a living off of, and they should do what I did and get a fucking job for a long time, even though you're a pro. Cause that's what I did. I was a pro working fucking mortgages for years. I didn't struggle cause I fucking worked. I don't feel bad for people that are struggling because if you're struggling because you're a bodybuilder, which that's a hobby or even considered a job because for very few of us, it's considered a full-time job. So I did mortgages for seven years. I turned pro in 2000 and Eight. I was doing. I turned pro while I, I took days, days off from work to com, to go to Atlanta to compete. So my sympathy level for people that that don't make a, you know that don't have money or don't make a living or zero, and people want to get like famous off Instagram and they want to make their living off that and they complain they don't have money. Zero sympathy. You can do that. Work in the meantime. Work and do that. Work and compete. Work and so what, do. What makes a difference between yourself and 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 an amateur, because an amateur would work and train the same way. I mean, you should at least have something like a, a career to look forward to as a pro. Oh, absolutely. You're asking me, do I? I mean, generally, I mean, when... Oh, you dude, I have, that, listen, I have, I have my fucking website, my clients that do well, my clothing line that does absolutely amazing. 
Um, I'm looking into doing my own thing eventually. Um, I'm not going to say in terms of what, um, yeah. but uh, I have my gas contract, my atomics contract. I have, I'm signing with a company probably today. I can't say who it is. Um, but I, if, if I, if you took all my contracts from me, I would be completely fine. Yeah. Like I make like my, my website, What's my your, website could pay my entire year salary. What's your main source of income apart from your sponsorships and my, my website website, what like, yeah. what, like clothing or I have, I have hats, I have shirts, I have clothes. I have, um, I do eBooks. I have, uh, um, clients. Yeah. 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 You know, once you're an established pro, it's very hard to not make a living. But the problem is, is that a lot of these pros are, yeah, you know, in front of the camera. Yeah. You know, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. This product, why do you use it? It's got glutamine in it. And, yeah. Uh, that's you have to be a personality, isn't it? Like, I'm, but see, I think people go, oh, you're, you're, you're such a great personality. I, I'm not a personality. I'm just fucking me. Yeah. This is, I, this isn't a fucking, like, I don't put on a, an act for anybody. Like you get, you, uh, Fazl, you've been around me many fucking times. I don't act different in front of you than I do a fan, than I do in front of a camera, than I do in front of fucking my. We have, sponsors. we have a nickname for you here. You know that. A fucking angry something, I'm sure. Yeah. Angry Italian man. <laughs> <laughs> it's me and jo uh, um, James Hollingshead. We, we made this, you know. James is together. a great, uh, uh, man. He's yes. one, he, I absolutely. Him Danica. and Danica, his wife, I, they are fucking two absolutely, absolutely, absolutely amazing people. Amazing. We've I, never I, heard I, anyone say anything different, you know. Uh, when I, James, I would, I that kid. You want to talk about a genuine, kind-hearted, loving, down-to-earth, would take a bullet for anybody type of man. Like that's that dude. Mm, absolutely, a good yeah, fucking dude. Wow, good dude. <clears throat> We're. Uh... We're coming close, but there's a, there's a quiz that that we're gonna play, like a pub quiz. We're gonna be English today. You're gonna uh, wait, you're gonna you're gonna ask me questions. Well, for both of you, how's that feel? Go <laughs> <laughs> ahead. Check this out. First first question is you're gonna love this shit, uh, guy. I'm not looking at you because I'm I'm trying to focus on the, what the question's going to be. That's why I'm not paying attention. To oh you. no no, it's it's actually it's actually genuine uh, uh, questions. They're real questions, and uh, they have very funny answers though. But some of them, I'm actually. So am I going to answer this seriously? Um, it's up to you, man. <laughs> answer it the way you want. <laughs> they're they're actually they're actually pub quiz, you know, but. I I'm saying, are, are these questions that people asked you, or these questions that you came up with? Are these like things is, you found at barstool people. sports that I'm going to ask? Like, would I rather like like get fucked by my dad, or like do like oh, was it one of weird questions? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't need like Fuad was trying to play with that. I was like, stop. Yeah. Right. Listen. For, one one of the guys here sends a question saying, "Does guy know where his surname comes from?" And he's Italian himself. Where Sister Nino comes from. Yeah. Well, John. John can't actually pronounce your name. How do you How do you pronounce it, John? Sis, Sister Nina. Oh, yeah. oh, now you change it. Well, what did I say? Three people Nina. always go Cicerino. They leave Cicerino. out an N. Cicerino. It's it, it's if you're Italian, it's Cicerino. If you're American, it's Sister Cicerino. Nina. Yeah. If like so, if you took the C and just made it an S, it's Sister, and then yeah. it's N I N O Nino. And Sister Nino is a town in Italy. That's what I know. Yeah, yeah. So he, he said uh, it's uh, next to a uh, – it's in the south of Italy next to a, a town called Bari or something like that. Bari, yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, so they he, were trying to think I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, little fucks. No, no, no. You're going to fucking get me, you little – I didn't know that. This, this is what was going on. And, and his question is like, why is Guy always angry? <laughs> If he's Italian, he knows that this is just me talking. Exactly. Yeah. People always are about... like, why do you sound mad? And I'll be on the phone. I'll be like, I'm not. What are you? I'm, I'm like, chill, bro. I'm here with the, I'm talking with you with a smile. Yeah. <laughs> we got me and my best friend, Kim. We had a conversation the other day because I was pissed off about something. And, and I've known Kim for 20 years. I was in her wedding, on her side of the wedding. That's how close uh, me and her were. And we got into a fight just over whatever. And she's like, I'm not going to talk to you. She calls me Gaetano. She's like, Gaetano, I'm not going to talk to you if you're going to fucking talk to me like this. She's like, all you do is scream and yell and get abrasive. I was like, you've known me for 20 years. I go, 
if I'm mad at you, I go, I will preface the conversation with, I'm fucking pissed off. I said, I haven't said that yet. I go, so this is just my tone. <laughs> yeah, well, John, you're, you're, you're very English. So you're cold and relaxed and chill. But yeah, I, I can imagine you. That's like I can imagine if you if you switch. Huh? If I switch. If you if you, if you switch, what what happens? <laughs> That's why I body build. <laughs> That's why I body build. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, like 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 if he gets pissed off. Yeah. Oh, I kill. Somebody. That's why I can't come to America right now at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> I got. <laughs> I'm wait. I'm, everyone keeps saying when you can compete in America. I'm like when I can get a visa. <laughs> Why? What happened? Well, I was, I was a little dickhead when I was younger. It usually but, means you can't get a passport to travel outside of the UK because you yeah. did something that's not expunged from <clears throat> record yet. I'm I'm convicted, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So so you can travel to Europe and, and Asia and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah, but to America, I have to get a um, I need to get an interview to the American embassy, which I was literally wanting to start sort of going into the process of getting, but um, now they've closed off all appointments to the American embassy because of COVID, so I can't do it at the minute. But as soon as they can, I've got one of my, my sponsors. Um, he's trying to help me as well on his side, but I'll right. get I'll get one. I'll get one. Listen, listen, if uh, if Hadi. The, you know, the, the, the Persian guy got a visa. I'm sure you can. I don't know if he's going to get it this year, bro, with what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know, man. It would have been good to see him up there, but. Yeah. With my thing, it's like I hear different from everyone. They say it's like, oh, if it was like 10 years ago, you'd be sweet. Or six years ago, it'd be sweet. I don't know. It was, oh, yeah. my thing was about seven years ago. So I'm sure it'll be all right. Well, let's go. Give it a let's shot. These pop quiz questions that I don't know. All right. <clears throat> they say. Henry the Eighth. Oh this is God. a is this because I'm a history major. They exactly, exactly. That's what he said. He said. He said. Guy says he's a history teacher. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, I wait. But first of all, I never said. Never ever did I say I was a history teacher. I said that I went to school to be a history teacher, and that I substitute taught. Um, I substitute 12, what years was it? It was 2000, 2000, and I got laid off in 2009. So 2009 to 2010, um, I was substitute taught at uh, three different high schools. And I was going for my, I, I, I wanted to be a, a full-time teacher. So a lot of times when you sub for a school, if somebody leaves or goes to maternity leave, like they'll hire you full-time. So that's what I was hoping for. But then, all this stuff happened with bodybuilding, and it just uh, – it uh, that was that. You must have been the most jacked history teacher ever. Nobody – do the first day of school. Well, hold on. L let me hear the question first, and I'll get back to the first Nobody day. knew. <laughs> no. <'Cause, laughs> all right. So, Henry VIII introduced which tax in England in the 1500s? A tax. What do you know? You're okay, English, well, aren't you, you fucker? I don't fucking Wait, know. No, no, don't answer yet, because let me think. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So, John, you know? No, I don't fucking know. Hold on. Attacks. Can I give you a clue? No. All right. I need to give you a clue because it's actually funny. Does it have to do with, with, with marriages? No, not was at all. With, it's something. Wasn't he so married to like six women or something? Yeah, he had yeah, like six. Something yeah. Something like that. Right, he had like six wives because it was fifth, it was fifteen hundreds, right? Yep. I think it was like fifteen oh nine, actually. If you if, if if when he actually went became king, or like whatever it is. Yeah. This this tax. Tax thing, or he, tax. Tax. Like a tax on goods. Yeah. Okay. So what tax did he actually introduce in the in fifteen thirty five? Let me be even more specific. 1535, he introduced a tax in, in, in Britain. Yep. And, and there's a reason why he asked you this. Not only that he thought that you're a history teacher, it's because it's something that you have. Big dick. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> just, just kidding. A, a, a tax on being hung. What? <laughs> Dude, I, I don't know. <laughs> Chubby, 
Beard tax. A beard what? tax? Yeah. A beard tax. You used to get tax How would beard tax like, on length? No way. Hold on. Yeah. I'm going to get my phone and look this up. You see? You see, dude? So you and I are fucked back in the day. <laughs> that, can't be, that, that doesn't even sound like it's something that could be true. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, actually. Fuzz, Henry, you, hat on, you two look nigh on identical. <laughs> Dude, don't say that. He gets really angry about that. <laughs> what? So it's you two like, look really identical if he was wearing a hat. <laughs> no, I changed the style in, of my beard. Oh, hold on. Okay. In 1535, King Henry VIII of England, who wore a beard himself, introduced a tax on beard. The tax was, gradu- it was a graduated tax, varying with the wearer's social position. His daughter, Elizabeth first of England reintroduced the beard tax, taxing every beard of more than two weeks growth, although it was poorly enforced. Oh, more than two weeks growth. <laughs> so I'm telling you, we're fucked. <laughs> the dumbest fucking thing you, ever. You, be, you guys would be like, I swear it's only a week. It's only My a week. My sponsorship money would be going right to the fucking king. <laughs> Holy shit. I think, I think, I think it's uh, execution. <clears throat> so second question. So, so history question? No, no, that's 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 actually for John because do you wear hockey uh, hockey uh, teams on your on your hats? No, I don't. I'm I, mean, this, not a, I don't follow hockey. This is the Jets. <clears throat> well, someone thinks it's a hockey team that you wear, but it says here, "What oh, wait, were the first?" Hear can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying yeah. to understand what fucking. You, wait, they think I, is this for John or me? Me. Is it oh, awesome? I'm like, John. what fucking hats do I wear? I'm like so confused. All right, go ahead. I'll wear it's one a, red hat and this one. Yeah, but uh, someone thought it's probably a hockey hat or something. Like it's a hockey team or something. No. So it says here, what were the first ice hockey pucks made out of? Well, I don't know because I don't follow hockey. Did you know? <laughs> Got it? They, what were they made out of? Yeah, I'd probably say fucking made from concrete covered in rubber, if I had to guess. <laughs> You'll never, never believe it. <laughs> Frozen cow shit. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, that, that wasn't a hockey puck. That's, somebody, that's something somebody said, hey, let's hit this around with a stick. <laughs> I was Frozen. talking like legit hockey pucks, like ones that actually were used in like game, like playing. Not no, some the fucking first. moose turd on the a first, fucking the first, on a farm. Know, frozen cow yeah, yeah. dung. All right, that's that's the exact answer. I so, that, I, I I didn't fucking know that. I'm I'm just reading it out because hockey hats. Well, this dickhead probably thought you. Well, you, because it's 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 uh, for hockey instead of NFL, it's NHL. So it's very. What is it? And it. Yes, NFL. Yeah, 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 what I'm saying is, is that it's very similar. The NL yeah, is very NHL, close. NHL, yeah, it looks similar. Yeah. All right, this, this, this question is stupid. I'm sure you guys know what it is. Who beat, who beat Ronnie Coleman in the top of his game? Gunter. What year? Oh, the it, was at, it wasn't at the Olympia. It was, at the, was it the Ironman? Keep going. 2004. No. Two. Correct. Do you know what show? I was going to say 2003. No, it was 2002 at the GNC uh, show in uh, New Orleans. Iron Man? The GNC show in New Orleans. Okay. It was Gun- Gunter beat him. Yeah, it was Gunter, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, it, I, knew it was, I knew it wasn't the O, and I knew it was o, I knew it was it was somewhere else. And uh, I, I just couldn't think of it. I was going to say 2003. It was 2002. I got a good question for Guy. I've had loads. Let me let me butt in and ask him one. Go on, go on, go ahead. This is really cool now. Guy, if you was twenty, what would you go back in time and tell yourself? I mean, ah, uh, I think he means what would you tell your twenty year old self? Um, just because somebody looks like they know what they're doing doesn't necessarily mean they know what they're doing. Like I always tried to look at the biggest guy when I was younger and ask him the most questions and try to do things his way, but that's um, I. I thought that there was one, like that one person's method was the way to 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 do it. Like you had to train this way, you had to diet this way. But um, I would go back and tell myself to be more conscious and paying attention to my body, because I think that's one thing we don't do is that we're so worried about getting coaches that we actually don't put enough attention into ourselves 
to understand what it is to be flat, what it is to be full, what it is to be watery, what it is to be, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah, you know, yeah. how many times did, did somebody ask you, well, you full, you're flat, and you're like, I, I don't fucking really know. Yeah, you, like, you don't know what that feels like. Yeah, so I would tell myself to fucking pay more attention. Yeah, listen to your body. Yeah. I get that. That's good. That's good because I fucking hate nowadays everybody just following trends because of Instagram. Man. I know. Oh, mate, what is it with everyone keep talking about splits? People keep talking about asking me what split I'm on. I'm like, what the... <coughs> doesn't fucking matter what split oh, I'm on. I just trained the fucking everybody part. Oh, mate, everyone's on what split, what split's better. Like, I, I, I tell, I have this, I've, been, I've, I've had the same split. I mean, I changed it this off season to give myself an extra fucking day off. Yeah. But, I mean, my split has been the same for fucking like 10 years. Yeah. Like, I don't have to change it. Yeah. For what? I couldn't tell anybody my split. I just walk in and train what feels good. Yeah, so you do instinctive training, yeah. Yeah, that's what I've always done. Jay was the first dude I watched in bodybuilding, and that's what I've always done. But if you tell people, like, like I have clients and that, and telling them to take a day off is a fucking nightmare. They just think more is more. Oh, I please. I, 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 I get clients like that because if you're not going to listen to me, then just don't. I, I won't take your money because you're just going to piss me off, and I don't, I'm not in the position to want to be mad every day because you don't want to listen. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. But uh, guy, I mean, <clears throat> do you do do you train like isolation or do you do that push pull shit? No, I do uh, right now. Um, normally it's a little different because normally I don't take off on Wednesdays. I just take off on Sundays. But my split now is uh, Monday. I do back a little bit of biceps. Tuesday morning hamstrings. Tuesday night shoulders. Wednesday is my off day. Thursday quads. Friday chest and uh, or no shoulders and a little triceps at night on Tuesday. And then Wednesday's off, Thursday's quads, Friday's chest, Saturday's arms, Sunday's off. But when I'm Very dieting, similar to like, like, like when I'm not in an off season, I'm, pre, I'm pre-contest, I go back a little bit of buys. I go um, back, I go shoulders, uh, a little bit of triceps. Then I go Wednesday quads, Thursday chest, Friday hamstring, Saturday arms, Sunday off. All right. Cool. And I've been following that for – Everybody ever, always asks for a split. I go, this is the one that I find works the best. You don't have to do the extra buys and tries. I have small arms, especially now that I got a fucking surgery. So it's like I try to fucking keep them as full as possible. Mm. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I have a very – this dickhead keeps sending me the same – he sent this question three times. What? says, if you're – sorry, I don't mean to offend anyone here. But... I don't give a fuck sex. Um, if your if your father got bitten by a snake in his dick, would you suck his dick to take the venom out? No. <laughs> no, I get a vacuum and be like, here, I'll turn it on. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, why the fuck would anyone send me a like a, a question like probably that? Because he, probably because he's five. There's he, he, at that he age, I would cu- I would cut his dick off before I'd suck it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, you're 65, you don't really need it, so I'll just cut it off and call it a day. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. My dad, my dad's like 65. I'll just I like, want to oh, know. I, I, I want to know the person who actually asks that because they're the ones who need to seek medical attention because they're crazy. Absolutely. Absolutely. He probably uh, did it and then, and then regrets it and then just wants... <laughs> Is that you know what? <laughs> You know what? I get so many, so many accounts. Like, for example, you put a, you put a question out there. You know, we're having guys. It was me. I would have just. I, it was me. I would suck the venom out myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Have you ever tried? <laughs> huh? No. The, the rumor is going to turn out now that guy. I don't even think rich. I can fucking. Bang. He has to get rid of a rib. <laughs> Maybe oh, five. <man>. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, by the way, things are looking down here. I'll need to fucking remove my whole gut. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so this, this, I get people. For example, I mean, I'm putting out, uh, you know, you know, guys, we're gonna get Guy Cistrino on the show. Any questions? And I get these accounts where they have like three followers, and they're following like they six thousand people. They hate me. That's exactly what it is. I mean, um, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, speak to us about this. Why do, why do people hate you like this? Don't I mean, know, come on. We, we know you have a lot angry. of... Don't know, don't care. 
People don't like me because I curse. Well, too bad. If you're if you're mad that I curse, and that is the thing you want to not like me about, with all the shit that's happening in the world, my mouth is the thing that's going to offend you the most because I say fuck. Well, that's the case, and I don't really want you to be a fan or a follower because if people fuck bothers you that much, then you you got you got some mis fucking construed uh, views in your life. Mm. Well, we, we I don't ever I don't I don't fair. think I'm a great bodybuilder. I don't think I'm better than anybody else. I don't. Th- I think 99% of the guys in bodybuilding can easily beat me, but I think I outwork a lot of them. And I think a lot of people don't like the fact that I say I outwork people, um, or I train hard. But um, if there ever comes a point where there's a something that comes out about what I've been through in my life and all the fucking shit I've gone through and trials and tribulations, like it's it's like people have no people wouldn't last a day a fucking day in some of the shit that I've been through. A day. People would have hung it up a long motherfucking time ago. So I don't... People can fucking hate me all they want, but they don't... Like, they don't know how much, like, good shit... Like, I when I drive up, I take care of one of my neighbors who's elderly, bring her garbage cans in and out, her trash in and out, left her face mask in her thing, told her she needed to uh, go to the grocery store. I'd pick up her stuff. I took all my fucking food, dropped it off at two different hospitals, Brought another urgent care fucking like $60 worth of Italian because they did my test. Like I, I go to military bases all over the place. I do stuff for military. I do charity work. Like if people don't like me, if you don't like me, then <laughs> what, what are you doing that's greater or better than something that I'm doing that makes you look at me like I'm a piece of shit? It's like I know how good of a person I am. I know what I do for people. I know how much I've gone out of the way. Do I have my fucking convictions in my life? Yeah, so do you and so does John. Like- it's how it is. Can I, can I say something, but people try not to take advantage of that. When I called, I mean, I text guy and I said to him, dude, look at what happened to me. I swear to God. And I said to him, I left all my clothing, uh, all my quadra clothing in Morocco. Did I ever send it? You never did, but it's still the gesture, man. It's like. What you, size? I have no idea, man. I've, I've shrunk so much. What so. size, large or XL? XL, XL. Look I'll, at that. I will pack it. I mean? like, XL, pack don't it. lie, live. Don't lie, live. XL. <laughs> XL, double XL, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? Like, this guys, is class. It's a class act. Do you know what I mean? I said to him, guy, I left all my clothing in Morocco and I, because, uh, you know, I, I had to leave last minute. Hmm. The guy, look at him. He said to me, bro, just take care of the, uh, of the shipping. And obviously I need to pay um, the duty here Yeah. and I'll send you whatever you need. You know, like, come on, man. You don't want hats, to... right? Yeah. One hat, please. Look at that. What color? I don't know. What do you have? Blue red. <laughs> I'm actually shopping live. Recording. <laughs> live. <laughs> live. Blue red. Uh, blue would be good, man. What size? Small or large? Uh, the small, sure. medium, they're inflexible. There ain't, there ain't a hat big enough to fit his head. Oh, I'm, I'm a large. big head. Hold on, hold on. Let me have a look at this one. Uh, small, yeah, small, large, bro. Small, large, you idiot. It's small, uh, medium, sorry, large. Sorry, small, medium, so small, medium, small, medium. Red? Uh, I said blue. Oh, blue, okay. All right. are, are you sitting in the stock room? Me? Yeah? Yeah, do you want to employ me? What? <laughs> do you want to employ me? I'm, I'm. You're in fucking Britain. What good are you gonna do? <laughs> I'll, I'll get a flight, man. I'll come over. I just got your address. It's packed now. Okay. We happy? We we resolved that issue. Thank you. Thank you. You see what I mean? No, but what I, what I was trying to say, guys, when People, when I, I always had, say I'm gonna send shit out and I forget, so that's it's fine. okay. I, I understand that you're busy, but the the gesture itself. When I said to him, I left all my clothes over there, and I don't have any any quadro things left. The guy offered it just like that. Just pay pay you know pay for the. Uh, yeah, just, the said, said, just pay me the shipping. I'll send everything. That's what I mean, guys. I mean, uh, whoever is watching this, well, I'm sure a lot of haters are going to watch this. Now I'm going to get so, people uh, asking me for free clothes. Hey, I ran out. I have no clothes left. Can you send me free clothes? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, that wasn't the intention. So, uh, um, so uh, guys, I think we're going to have to wrap it up. Awesome. Because I need to fucking eat. Me too. I did cardio um, and sat. I didn't even eat yet.
Yeah, I need to eat. Well, you, you still haven't done your cardio yet. I know. I did my. I did my. I woke up. I did yard. So my. I wake up, make my bed, vacuum my bedroom every morning because my my dog. So I just vacuum right where at, like like I sleep, and then they have their bed. So I wake up, I vacuum everything, make my bed, go downstairs, take them out. They poop. They pee while they're pooping. I had to take I my hose and I got to go around my house and all the stuff that I laid where all the hay is. I got to water it every day for two weeks until the grass starts to grow. Then I got to water my garden. Then I come back inside. Then I feed the dogs. Then I get, then I make my drink. Then I go downstairs and I do cardio. So I'm up for two hours before I'm even like half the time before I even do anything. Cause I got to take care of so much stuff in the morning with the dogs and in my house. And it's that by the time I get going, it's 11 o'clock. And people are like, oh, you're doing, you sleep in. I'm like, I'm up at seven o'clock in the morning. I, you just not see me doing cardio until 10 because I've been fucking doing shit. John, we need, we need to hook him up with a, with a British chick. With a British uh, chick. Very slow. Yeah, all, all I do is just wake up and, you know, maybe have a wank. <laughs> my, my girl, um, she's, she's Italian. So. Oh, you're, you're seeing someone now. Huh? You're seeing someone now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm in, I'm in a, I'm in a relationship. I, uh, I, 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 I had a couple of nasty uh, relationships and, and one was on, on my fault. Like it was, uh, it, it, ended on my, it ended because I was an idiot. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been talking to somebody for a couple months, so it, it's going well. So I don't, you know, I think the mistake that I made um, early on was I kind of, uh, you know, I, I think that, and I'll tell people this, I think people get very trigger happy when they start dating somebody and start posting immediately on social media. Yeah. And I don't like to, and I, I did that a few times, but now when I'm in a relationship, like I try not to make it like not well known, but like I've seen so many people. It's like the more I see people brag about how good the relationship really is on social media, it's actually the polar opposite. No, yeah, no of course. Pressure in there. You know? Um, but yeah, she's, uh, you know, I, she's, she's awesome. So. Well, good luck to both of you. Uh, I hope I'm invited to the wedding one day. Oh, we're jumping um, from I'm dating somebody to wedding. No, well, one day. You know, I'm just I saying. Said, I'm just giving I was you the married pitch. once already. I've been that. I've, I've fucking been to that rodeo. Oh yeah, you go. You're not gonna get married anymore. No, absolutely. I want to get married. I want, I want kids, man. I want to have a couple kids. Hmm. If fucking I don't know. If uh, the world opens back up and we're you're we're allowed to start procreating again, we'll see. <laughs> So uh, I think it's thinking of, you know, speaking of, uh, you know, privacy and everything, I'm, no one even knows how my wife looks like. Yeah, I haven't seen your wife. You see what no. I mean? It's like, yeah. I never post anything private. That's on because my... he's gay, John. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's just husband. He an inflatable husband. sex, though. I'm not saying you got to fucking sh cut her off from the goddamn world, you maniac. <laughs> Get her locked up. It's yeah. not that. It's just like I, I have friends. Like, yeah, they might not post about their girl on social media, but like, I know their wives and stuff. Like, I've seen. Yeah, them. well, when you get your ass down here, you'll meet her. Oh, for the fifteen <laughs> times I've been there to your zero. In in, in Dude, the you always you were always busy, man. Come on, you were you were. You I were was at your last. Every time I'm there, I see the problem is John. I I fucking travel for events, and yeah. he thinks I can make up my day to day. I'm like, this is where I have to go. You can either come here. <laughs> Or I gotta go somewhere like I'm on somebody else's schedule, like it ain't mine. But I went to that Two Bros Pro show. You did, one. yeah. You, uh, um, I it was two uh, in 18, 18 I was there with Luke. I was there with Ben. I was there with James. Oh, was you? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, actually, you know what? I actually heard a rumor about about you there. Me or John? No, guy. You. What? I heard. I heard you scared the shit out of a kid. He was trying to take a picture with you, and you're talking, and you just turned around. You didn't know who it was, and you and you went mental. Oh, I, you know, but I was joking around. I told him that. <laughs> <laughs> the guy actually. I was shot talking. Himself. He was like, he was like, he was talking. I was talking to somebody, who was, and he was like, and he goes, "Hey, bro, can I get a picture?" I go, "I don't fucking take pictures with anybody, bro." And I turned back around and I turned. I was like, "Dude, I'm just kidding." And he was like, <laughs> I, "I go, dude, I, I don't fucking take pictures with anybody." Like, that. <laughs> I swear I to God, fans come up to me all the time. They'll this be like, guy hey, can I take himself? Well, I swear to God, this guy is in, in terror at the moment. He's like, guy is scary as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Traumatize the boy. People do that. People come up to like the Arnold 
like, hey, can I take a picture? I'm like, no. And they'll be like, <laughs> I'm like, don't forget to say no, right? <laughs> You're evil, man. You're fucking evil. I, I, I like to laugh, man. I like to, I'm a ball buster. That's why, like, I don't, people can make fun of me all day, like gnomes and memes and that. But it's when you get just blatantly disrespectful, that's when I just don't tolerate that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right, guys, we better wrap it up. Thank you very awesome. much, Guy, for uh, for being bro. here. Uh, anytime. I really, really appreciate your time. I know that you're a busy guy, so thank you so much for being here, man. Not and, a problem. Uh, send me your address. Around, I will. I'll send it to you right now. All right, John, if you need anything, let me know, buddy. I uh, appreciate it, man. Thank you, bro. Cheers, All right, guys, be good. I'll talk to you soon. You too, guys. Take care. I'll be good. Bye. Wow. <laughs>